Good morning, afternoon and evening. Uh, this uh, title, uh, the title of the course is uh, Neurosciences uh, for Engineers. So, uh, the course starts from a lot of, uh, lot of uh, thought in uh, various uh, uh, fora starting from uh, research to uh, teaching and, uh, uh, and uh, from the industry. So, neurosciences has become an in integral part of the uh, engineering workflow. Uh, thanks to the uh, thanks to the developments in artificial intelligence, uh, it's become the watchword for uh, most uh, contemporary technological advances. There is hardly any area of uh, engineering which has not been touched by uh, neural sciences. So, th what the course attempts to do is it gives to uh, it tries to give the relevant biological flavor for the uh, engineering uh, faculty students and the engineering community at large. Uh, this is actually a beginning, it is an attempt to, uh, to uh, bridge a gap which has always been in existence. I have seen western uh, classes and courses which uh, take care of this, uh, this, this particular uh, area of uh, science. Uh, why now we deal with this uh, course is because um, uh, a teacher, uh, uh, the material needs to be presented in a different way for, an, uh, for a non-biology -bio group of uh, audience. Now, uh, that can be done only when you have people who can bridge the gap between the engineering side and the uh, biological sciences. So, I felt that, that there is a particular need and uh, being a student myself in an engineering domain, I felt that the uh, need is acute because uh, there is a, there's a lot, of, uh, lot of stuff which, which is done by engineering people, but we, who do not uh, understand that there is a biological basis for many of it. Ultimately, uh, all of us are humans, we are biological entities and many of the uh, uh, inspirations we take, take from ourselves as human beings and from nature. Uh, are, are um, <coughs> uh, form the foundation on which we do our work, whether it uh, be in many of the physical sciences, engineering sciences. So, that forms the inspiration for this course. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, I would like to address the what forms the target audience. So, at the outset it is engineering students. Uh, why engineering students? Because they are going to be the uh, the future generation who is going to build the next level of uh, uh, hardware and software. So, I felt that there is a necessity of uh, showcasing what is known in the biological side, the medical side, where, uh, where there are some advances. So, uh, the first target is of course, the people who are doing AI and ML. Uh, because neural networks as you know are the uh, uh, benchmark uh, computing uh, entities on which m most of the developments are happening in the uh, research as well as in the commercial uh, areas. So, uh, when we, when I have seen introductory uh, biological introductions, I found that they are completely inadequate and they do not reflect the richness of the nervous system and the computation of the nervous system. Also, uh, even in technical papers, I have understood that uh, many people actually try to, you know, uh, model their, uh, their work based on biological entities, but there is, there is, there is this gap uh, which, which stems from a lack of understanding. So, it is to this uh, group that I address the uh, course to. Now, also there are, there are several other domains of engineering where, uh, where, we, where, where there is a necessity to focus on uh, very unrelated stuff like say for example, console, control system theory which I, uh, which I understand. So, uh, obviously people who are interested in control system theory would like to know how nature takes care of uh, stuff, how, how we as human beings are able to perform tasks so fluid and so, so controlled. But as yet, uh, you know, in a in a very rich uh, environment. So, how does how does nature or the nervous system take care of this uh, stuff? So that's the second area of uh, second area of focus. The third group is biomedical engineering. Biomedical engineering, they are supposed to have uh, neural sciences as a uh, as a part of the syllabus, and I'm sure that they would be taking a re reading through that. But uh, again, uh, biomedical engineering, the graduates as yet as of now are most of them are from the engineering background and they would like to listen to something with an engineering flavor rather than with a very droll medical terminology and biological terminology. 
traditionally we we have noted that uh, people who don't like biology go into engineering and who don't like engineering are in biology but times have changed and uh, this this uh, artificial division exists because the way in which the material is presented. So, material in the biological sciences have fancy names, we are supposed to have a large uh, memory capacity to remember that, whereas engineering is generally thought to be of uh, as an analytical science in which there is a lot more work to be done and less of memory. But uh, there, there is a meeting point between that, uh, between the two sciences and biomedical engineers are exactly in that. Uh, area where uh, where they need to focus on both these fields. So, it is also to give a, uh, a presentation to these people that uh, you know who can who can focus on their uh, foco focus on their courses uh, better than what they were doing so far. Now, there are also groups of students you know uh, groups of students who are not engineers who are not in the biomedical sciences, uh, but uh, they, they have a keen interest in neurosciences. I have had uh, in my past experiences of uh, conducting science exhibitions, I have noted that uh, some of the better uh, questions come from students who are in their uh, high schools and uh, undergraduate classes and uh, who, who have never understood or uh, who have never been exposed to neurosciences in general. Now, if you try uh, looking into neurosciences uh, videos uh, uh, or um, literature on the topic, it is very difficult to enter into the topic, you, you, are there, you are expected to have a certain level of maturity to uh, listen to understand the topic. What the uh, tri course tries to do is you, you find some material which is easily understandable even by a person who does not have a technical background in any of these areas, uh, neither the engineering side nor the medical side of this story. So, it is for those people that this course should uh, help some uh, help them make. It is also sort of uh, uh, trying to inspire people to work into the field, because both engineering and neurosciences are hot areas, but you should know what it what it takes to do, take a career in either of these or maybe both of this. There is also another group of people whom I am trying to address, uh, the senior faculty, the people who are actually doing engineering work. And Somewhere in their work, they find that you know that you have a problem which requires a solution, which is you know you 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 are a very good engineer, but then there are some things which you would like to know how nature takes care of it, how humans do it within their heads and bodies, and that may form an inspiration to either your research work or your jobs, or just you know as something which you add on to your knowledge base which you already richly have. So, it is these very diverse groups of people that I try to address uh, address this uh, course to. So, uh, so, why me? So, that is the next obvious question. Uh, this is a difficult question. So, uh, to answer because uh, anybody who has a medical background sh can technically uh, produce this course. So, why do you need to listen to me is something which I have to convince you. So, I have I am a neurosurgeon, practicing neurosurgeon. My job is regularly to go into the skull and operate on the brain. So, I have a USP that way, you know I have learnt about the brain and I also handle diseases of the brain in physical terms. So, going into the skull and seeing parts of the brain gives a different kind of knowledge which is very different from reading textbooks, uh, doing statistics and numbers and working in a lab. So, it is with that pride that I take the opportunity of trying to teach something of what is there within the skull and how it works and why it should be necessary for all of you to understand a part of it. Uh, part of It is also with humility that I say that of course, uh, there are limitations in my own understanding which you would find at some point of time. There may be discrepancies between what is taught to you, what you understand and what is generally prevalent. There are places where I take liberty of associating between various things which you may not find in a textbook, please do take it at face value because ultimately there are no authorities in any particular subject you know you have you, there are there are people who know stuff and there are people there are uh, there are uh, there is a lot of conflicting literature in many areas. So, as in any branch of science it is a attempt to tell what I know from my background, uh, you would need to you know be convinced you if you find something unconvincing it is an opportunity to work work more in that area and find new stuff. So, that is also another uh, reason. My background 
a professional uh, neurosurgeon with uh, who's doing an engineering PhD gives me a very unique perspective of things. So when I sit in an ML class, when you speak about <coughs> um, uh, te uh, techniques in uh, convoluted neural networks, how weights uh, and um, activations are uh, used to uh, used in uh, neural networks and what back propagation means. It has a completely different meaning for me as a biological person, as somebody who has learned the same stuff in medicine. So there is a there is a deeper understanding of this stuff. Of course, I can't still program, but you know I I understand how the uh, engineering side of the topic is dealt with. I also have an understanding of how the biological side of uh, uh, biological side works. So the attempt is to use both of my knowledge backgrounds and make it more sensible to the next generation because you know people so far have been working in very isolated silos. So I think it is right for me with this kind of a background and somebody who is an hardware engineer on the uh, on, on this part of the skull to bridge the gap. So, uh, so what I uh, what I was uh, actually uh, saying is that there are there is there is this uh, opportunity of uh, there is also this opportunity that as neurosurgeons we 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 operate on various parts of the brain. I have operated on I think almost every square centimeter of the brain in various patients over the past uh, 10, 15 uh, years or so. So within that duration of time, I've seen what happens to people with uh, with various kinds of brain diseases, and we we you know we have taken out parts of the brain, we have not taken out parts of the brain, and how these people behave. And in fact, it's amazing that for the kind of surgery which we do, that uh, people have that much amount of uh, neurological reserve by which we, they are able to carry out their routine uh, lives. So it is that knowledge base which I would like to transfer to the audience and say how how rich it is and what is the opportunity for an engineering uh, student graduate uh, person in the domain to carry forth and uh, improve upon to you know at least match on uh, to something what is there in the biological side. So scope of uh, discussion. So you know that we we start with that there is there exists no syllabus. So what in neurosciences can I teach to a uh, engineering uh, audience? So how much of that? Uh, how much? What depth is required? And what is the scope of the topic? So frankly speaking, I have no idea. You know, it's it is it is it is it's an it's a beginning. So you would have to discount me on that uh, area. I've tried to cover any uh, cover topics which are, of course, taught in my medical uh, medical side of the story, and I've tried to put it in a kind in a, a, the packaging is different because an engineering graduate should not be taught uh, taught that uh, you know uh, the hippocampus is sitting in the floor of the temporal horn, or that the uh, pcom artery is a branch from the internal carotid artery which joins into the posterior cerebral artery. So that does not make sense. But what would make sense is that these vessels have unique functions and damage to these vessels cause unique problems. So maybe that is that's, that's to the extent with which I would mix up the biological side to the uh, course. So that is uh, that is the focus. So we start with a broad introduction to the structure and functioning of the nervous system as we understand it. And uh, I will try to put the terminologies as much as possible in a non-biological uh, way. So non-biological in the sense that I will try to use, not use medical terminology as much as possible so that you know it gets, uh, you would have a better understanding especially for people who do not like biology. Uh, there is all uh, the idea that we should be bridging between, bridging the topics between engineering and biology and that is one of the focus which I will be starting. And as I told in my earlier discussion, we will be spanning various levels of expertise starting from very fundamental uh, uh, fundamental uh, stuff to very advanced stuff. But of course, targeting an audience which is considered naive to neurosciences. So we will stop at this and then continue next. <coughs>